Your question is a really touchy matter when you're dealing with how do you separate from somebody who you've been with for so long and you really care for them, but you want to separate in the easiest, least painful, mm -hmm. um, most effective way. Uh, if you don't mind me asking, how long were you with your partner for? Um, two years. And uh, did you move in together? Did you um, spell out plans for the future? Give me a bit more information about it. So we moved in together about one year ago, and um, recently uh, he cheated. And so since then, it's just been closed off. He doesn't want to talk about it. He doesn't want to see me. Um, and, but we still live in the same home. So th the reason this is so painful for you right now is because you're still in the middle of the conflict. If you imagine um, being in a bad situation where, say, for example, uh, there was you know, a, a horrible, violent act that was going on or um, a, a negative experience where someone was talking bad about you, you physically staying in it and not being able to get out of it is where the problem arises because every day you're in this tumultuous situation. And what happens chemically in our brains is there's a chemical called cortisol that's triggered in stressful situations. And when you experience cortisol, it makes it very difficult to make clean decisions, decisions that actually involve a lot of thought because you can only really make reactive decisions. You can either fight, flight, or freeze, meaning you probably feel in a situation where you either want to argue with them, you feel in a situation where you want to run away, or that you just sit there and wait and hope it gets better and nothing happens. And these three decisions are really terrible when we're actually trying to focus on one goal here. And the goal isn't to fix this relationship. The goal here isn't to make amends or forgive the person. The goal here is to separate cleanly and easily. And that means you need no reminder whatsoever of this person. Now, let me explain why this is so important. Uh, it's possible to measure the pain of a breakup uh, by monitoring brain activity. So, uh, a breakup actually causes real physical pain. And there's a number of different theories for why this happens, but I wanna share with you the one that I resonate with the most, that I truly believe is what happens. Um, have you ever had a dream that you remember, but it never actually happened, but you can still recall the dream now, years later? Okay, what's fascinating is that never happened to you, and yet, you remember that dream, and you can recall it just like any other memory. Now, I'm gonna guess you and your partner made plans for the future, yeah. and just like that dream, you can recall those plans. Yes. They never happened. Never. But you had big ideas, things that you wanted to happen, and you can remember them. Hmm? And you can see as we talk about it, that makes you even more emotional, right? Yes. And that's simply because, just like a dream, they're not real, but you can still recall them. If you can recall them, your brain has actually created a neural pathway to that memory. A memory of an event that never happened, and sadly now, never will happen. And the brain has no need for that. There's no point remembering something that never will happen, and so it kind of like severs that memory. But then when you see your partner, you remember it again and it rebuilds. And then it's severed and it's rebuilt. Severed, rebuilt, and that's causing micro pains. But those pains are affecting your brain so badly, they're triggering the cortisol, which triggers the stress. So now we understand what's going on. I hope you can understand why you need what they call a clean break. But a clean break really, remain, uh, really means no memory of that person as best you can. So. This is how you go about doing it. The first thing is creating physical space. You say to the person, just so you know, um, I don't know whether you wanna have this person in your life ever again if you wanna maintain a friendship or not. If you don't, that's absolutely fine. You say to them, just so you know, this is so painful, I can't ever see you again. I don't need to. My whole goal is for us to make it so that we don't talk to each other ever again. And if you ever cared about me, if I ever meant anything to you, let me get my clean break so I can start rebuilding my life because every time I see you, it makes me collapse again, and I have to get over it all over again. It's my one wish, it's my one request. Most of the time, somebody's gonna honor that. If they don't, then you have to take much more drastic means to ensure you get it. The next thing you need to do, there's a temptation to delete them from your phone. You can't. If you delete them from your phone, they send you a message, you may not recognize that it's not them, and the next thing you know, you're in communication with them again. And this especially can happen three months later, six months later, a year later. I recommend you change their name to something insulting and stupid. <laughs> so for example, you could call him a sweaty smelly kid, yeah. right? So what happens is when you get a text message from sweaty smelly kid, you're literally looking at me like, oh, it's that guy. And the more realistic you can make the insult, the better it's gonna be for the breakup. 
but don't make it something that's going to remind you of the really bad situation. Yeah. So instead, make it something about like you know if he, uh, you know if he sweated all the time, that would be a good one, right? But something, <laughs> yeah. something, or, or if he constantly had snot dribbling down his nose, right? He'd be a snotty guy, right? Like yeah. something that's almost comical as it's insulting. Yeah. No picture, remove that. You don't need that from your phone. Um, and I'd strongly recommend removing all imagery that you can. Remove them from all social media. You don't need to see their updates. You don't need to see what's going on there. And we get a very, very clean break. Now, the next thing we have to do is we have to rebuild those neural pathways, those memories. We need to change them to be something else. When you're in a relationship, there's a sacrifice that is made, a number of sacrifices, things that you said you would never do. I don't know what they are. You obviously do because you're nodding already. But there'll be things like, um, well, being with this person means I can't go and live in California. Or being with this person means I can't see this one friend that doesn't get on with them. The goal is to make an entire list of things that now you can do. Things that you previously gave up on that are now open to you. Make a list, make a written list so you can see it. And then put tentative dates next to it of when you're going to do it. So this one's within three months. This one's within one month. This is your new task list. It's the life that you gave up previously, things that you were sad you had to give up, but it was worth it for this guy, that now you're giving up the guy because, to, let's be real, he doesn't deserve you, and instead you get to go and have that life that was once promised that you can now go and obtain. So this drastically changes the way your brain works. These new memories become things that you care about. And now what's great is anytime your brain thinks about the guy, it's got a new problem. Well, if I go for that guy, I can't live in California like I really want to. And suddenly it's very easy to get over the person because now what you are losing is worth so much more than the potential gain that you might get from this guy, which would come with all that pain. So this suddenly makes it a lot easier for you to get over that experience. And then the next step is to go out there and meet new people. Now, people say this all the time, like, you know, go and meet someone new, it will make you feel so much better. Yeah. But it can be a very difficult and stressful experience. So I want to give something to you. Don't think about getting into a relationship. Just okay. think about meeting new people. I never specified they have to be people you date. I never specified their age. You know, if you, if you see like a, you know, an old grandma that maybe needs some company, absolutely fine, go make a friend. Go meet somebody new. Elevate your life and do something better. I wanna leave you with a very powerful quote, something I think everybody should think about all the time. There is no greater revenge on anyone than you becoming the most successful version of yourself. Sometimes there is a temptation to hurt those that have hurt us, but the best way to do that is to actually not worry about them at all and focus on making yourself the most amazing, incredible version of yourself. So if we break this down into a simple step, number one, cut all ties, all, uh, all connections to them and move on. Number two, map out all the things you can now do, now they're gone, and put a real plan in action on how you're gonna go and get all these wonderful things. And then three, go out there and meet new people. Focus on going to conventions you always wanted to go to, or yeah. join meetup groups that you've always wanted to do, or maybe there's a class that you've always wanted to take, and now's the time to, make, uh, to join that class. You don't have to jump into dating. People will tell you to do that, and I don't recommend it. I just recommend expanding your social circle. Most people, they find their relationships through friends or through events that they, communal events that they will take part in. You're gonna have a much higher rate of meeting somebody you really care about by through a class or an activity that's new to you that you've joined that you're really excited about than you will going out to bars trying to meet somebody there. Yeah. So this is what I would strongly recommend. And I can tell even just from talking a little bit, the idea of some of those dreams of the things that you really wanted to do that you gave up, every time I say it, you're getting a bit of a smile <laughs> on your face. And that's a good sign. That shows that there is another life that once you gave up that is now your path. And what was once a very difficult decision, where you made a sacrifice to take this guy, is now being unsacrificed and given back to you as a gift, which is a better life with somebody that will treat you better, in a life where you will treat yourself better and you'll focus on becoming the most successful version of you that naturally draws people around you, that enjoy doing the things you like, and relationship will follow. Does that help? Yeah. Thank you. You'll hug it, I'm going hug it. <laughs>